advantages of a DAO. So what makes this really kind of interesting, right, is that remember, we defined a DAO as a software defined company, which means the DAO can move at computer speeds. And then, you know, this is good because now you can provide digital goods or services, payment processes at computer speeds throughout the whole process. And that includes being able to purchase things, otherwise arrange for, you know, I see here DAO works with NFTs. You can do all this stuff at the speed of whatever blockchain network you're on. Now, one of the biggest advantages to this is transparency. Now, what's interesting is that this is kind of one of those double-edged swords for me, right? Transparency in a lot of ways is a good thing, right? It's a crucial issue with a company. Again, people can feel better and they can trust the organization better because they see the whole financial and governance structures open, right? And by nature, it's a blockchain company, right? By nature, it's going to be that way. The computer code is wide open. The governance platform is wide open. The voting is wide open. Everything is open and subject to chain analysis, now, that's a great thing. But the other thing, too, is if you rely on secrecy, like, say, gambling or poker or something else, that could actually be a draw back to whatever you're doing here. So there's some things that you need to do to balance that transparency out. And there's ways of fixing that so that it's not completely transparent, especially if you're on the gambling side of poker, gambling, sports, other stuff like that. Right. Um, the other thing, too, is especially with um a DAO around things like an eBay auction or just auctions in general, right? You don't want to tip your hand here. So there's some things about transparency that you kind of want to be aware of, whatever basis of your DAO is going to be on. Now, the other one, this is actually pretty true. Your cost to operate is pretty low, right? It's sort of like running a single person startup like I am. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of money involved here. Cost to operate a DAO is lower than it would be in a regular company. You don't need a lot of support staff, but what you do need are some dedicated people. You need to have a vested management team, and that is people who are really truly interested in what you're building, why you're building it, and the mission of the DAO and why it exists. You definitely want to have a programmer, at least on standby, at least on like a moment's notice in case something is going wrong with the code and programming that you've got, especially if you're under attack, someone's draining the treasury or something else. You need to have that programmer and a monitor or a security person. You want to make sure that they are available, if not on staff 24-7 to make sure if something starts going wrong, you have the ability to just simply take an action. Now, the other thing that's interesting, too, is you want to make sure your stakeholders have voting rights, but you want to make sure that they actually vote. One of the biggest issues with DAOs right now is that voting is boring after a while. So people stop voting. So how you plan for the non-voting block is important. So you're probably going to want to have a lawyer on your side because you're going to, to be dealing with advice and compliance issues, especially with the Security Exchange Commission. Right, so the SEC is a big one, but overall your cost will be lower. You don't need a whole lot of support staff. You don't need HR. You don't need a big pile of system administrators because it's all on the blockchain, but you definitely need to have a vested management team, programmer, security people, and you need to make sure you have a process around what the non-voting block is going to be and a lawyer on standby. The lawyer doesn't need to be a member of staff, but they've got to be available when you need them, especially on foundation and formation. Now, the other thing that's really cool about DAOs is they're infinitely flexible. Again, it's just a program, right? It's something's new. You just build it and you secure it and you post it and it's running and you don't have to worry about it. Don't have to worry about scaling, system administration or anything else like that. It all operates on a blockchain and then it operates within the context of that blockchain. So the organization can be developed to a very specific need. And I love like the political DAOs that are like free Assange or do this or do that. And that once they've reached that particular goal, they can be disbanded, right? Much like the Constitution DAO, which was originally set up to buy an original copy of the United States Constitution, was unable to do it and then turned around and just went ahead and liquidated everybody out and disbanded, it, right? Which makes sense. The other thing that's really kind of cool here is that you actually really do kind of have a little bit more security. Your biggest worry is going to be code security and that the code doesn't have any loopholes that can be, you know, like a reentrancy attack or something else. So you kind of have a multimodal approach here. The code security can be ducted in all stages, right? So as you're going through your development cycle, your systems development life cycle, your software development life cycle, you know that there's security modules, you know that there's sex DevOps, you know there's QA, you know there's testing. You have a really robust test network. 
with most of the blockchains that are out there, actually all of them, have a test network that you can test your code on and absolutely recommend it. There's also a bunch of third-party certification companies and everybody else that can go through your code for you and make sure that you've at least addressed that risk, right? There's also a ton of tools and development support for coding securely, and a lot of that is baked into Remix or a lot of the other IDE tools that are out there that you can use to really apply that security process. And again, doing this is a huge trust measure, right? So you get to leverage the blockchain security as well. So you get a leverage like the EVMs, you've got the crypto signing, you can actually monitor your contract, you can set up for multiple oracles, and that once the data is written to the blockchain, it can't be changed. Now again, good documentation and support, make sure that everything is good to go. And there's a lot of really good documentation out there. There's a lot of good ideas around governance processes and everything else that really makes it, once you've addressed that idea of code security, the rest of it just kind of falls into place. And the big one is gonna be that Oracle and monitoring of contract functionality. Those are gonna be the two big things and that's where your programmer and your security monitoring come into play. Then finally, process. So everyone can vote based on the number of tokens they have. So one token, one vote, pretty standard kind of idea, right? One ballot, one person, all the rest of it. But the interesting part about that is that you can actually allow for groups and coalitions within the organization to form around key ideas. Now you do have to have that management team that can step in for a security issue, right? Or for a major issue that's going on with the code or something else like the treasury is being raided. But the rest of it around key issues, especially do we want this functionality? Do we want to buy this NFT? Oh, hey, Assange needs a certain amount of money. Do we want to send it to him via crypto? You've got that. So that really allows that organization to really become really dynamic as part of a process. And again, you've got your oversight, right? To respond to emergency conditions, they have to explain themselves post-fact, but overall the process of voting and proposals, pretty straightforward. Anyone can come along with any proposal that they want the DAO to do. As long as it makes sense, it will be voted into place and then immediately acted upon. So there's like no delays here. It's not like, hey, I want to buy this security system for the company. And a year later, you're finally ready to buy it. I mean, that's a pretty long pipeline. With this process, you make the proposal. Everyone votes on the proposal. If the proposal is good, it's immediately enacted. If it's not good, it's not. If it doesn't pass the vote, it doesn't pass the vote. And then finally, speed and autonomy. Again, you're running at blockchain speeds here, so this is a really good thing, right? So as long as the specified input exists from the specified source, like an oracle or something else, that contract is executed. Now, for some people, that's really uncomfortable, right? Well, how do I know? And that's a big question you're gonna get when you're looking at a DAO. You have to have some faith in the process. So if it's uncomfortable, you can do double signing. There's some things you can do to slow down that speed and have a human actually press the approval button. But for most contracts, yeah, that payout's gonna be pretty straight up. My coffee hits the port of Seattle, I need to pay my shipping company. That coffee hits the port of Peru where my coffee's being unloaded, I need to pay my coffee farmer. All of that can be pretty much so done really quite easily and can be verifiable and everything else through you know, bills of ladling and other stuff that goes along. You can do this for delivery of a product, a book, an NFT. You know, that transaction happens when approved. No human needs to be involved in here. And again, for small amounts of money, I would say just go for it because it's a small amount of money. But if it's a big chunk of change and you're really worried about it, putting in a double signing component to cannot hurt, right? Again, it slows everything down, kind of takes away from that idea of the DAO being decentralized. But again, it's a matter of where your comfort level is, and a DAO can accommodate that at the cost of some of the decentralization and oversight. So in summary, the advantages of a DAO are transparency, cost to operate is low, it's flexible, you've got some really good robust security mechanisms in there, you've got some really good robust process mechanisms in there, and the speed and autonomy of that contract is doing what it needs to do actually makes your life a whole lot easier. Even if you're nervous about it and you're worried about the oversight of that whole contract, you can at least put in some roadblocks in there to kind of slow it down a little bit, make sure that you're not getting raided. Okay, that's essentially the advantages of a DAO.